lot's a lot bigger on this one too. Yeah. Good morning. Morning. How are you? Okie dokie. Good. Good morning. Morning. Morning, Jim. Your hair looks nice. Good morning. Can you hear me? Nada. Yep, I can hear you. Thanks, Carol. Good morning. Morning, Charlie. Morning. morning. Where is Charlie? I don't see Charlie. I just see Carol's face. Not even her face, just a name. <laughs> yeah, because we went by crying. You don't want to see me. <laughs> I haven't taken a shower yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that means we can't smell you. That doesn't have any. I know, to do right? <laughs> <laughs> That's <Exactly>. true. <laughs> you look fine. What's wrong with that? No, my hair looks terrible. I wear a helmet. <laughs> know right kind of squishes it <laughs> yes it does well you better be prepared because when you cap you got to wear that cap anyway so yeah see that <laughs> yeah. you're you're about a quarter of the way there maybe <laughs> i don't know i'm not sure I, i'm hoping by the end of the year yeah you got three months you're good you can yeah. make it you can make it Trust me, I have made it in the first, when the first came here, you can. I did, I thought just like you, I was like, oh, forget it. I never, I'm not at this pace, I'm not, you know? No, but it worked out. Yeah. Hey, Jim, that buyer in Indiana is sucking the life out of me. <laughs> yeah, did, you, did you get a chance to talk to the husband? Or the yeah, son? I talked to him. Yeah, I talked to him yesterday and, uh, he said that, you know, she just doesn't, doesn't understand. And, uh, I got him woke up this morning to a couple of text messages from her. One, she doesn't like the realtor I sent her in Indiana because she wants things done to the house before she'll market it. And secondly, her friends are telling her that I should have her a house before they sell theirs. So she doesn't understand what's wrong with me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> she have dementia, Jackie? She has a traumatic brain injury from a car accident. Oh, Okay. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, if yeah, that's the case, difficult. I know, but if that's the case, maybe her husband should take it in his hands and say, you know, I will be the ultimate decision maker, but you know. Well, that's pretty much what he's doing. But when he goes to work, she goes behind his back. Yeah. Well, have you talked to that other agent or the husband about what what she's suggesting they do to the house? Um, I, I know she wanted it um, painted, which he, I mean, he is 100% what she wants to do. It's the wife that isn't. So I, I guess it's, I think what it's gonna, it's gonna boil down to is, is it gonna come to trying to keep her happy that he's gonna have to make some changes just to, so, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not, yeah. you know, there's nothing I can really do other than stay in contact and, I did go ahead and send her some listings this morning because that was one of her demands. Yeah. So, but I'm I'm not going to run around and look at all these houses from Rotunda West to Cape Coral. I'm not going to do it. God, no. Rotunda. Oh, I, would, I would just point out to her the house, like use a couple, take a couple examples of houses that she wanted you to go run around and look at and show her how quickly they went under contract. You know, because right. that's probably probably what's happening right yeah so, yeah i mean these houses that, that are on the market for you know one day they're they want nothing to do with a contingency when the house isn't even on the market yet hmm. right hmm. the only thing that i can hope for is that one of us come up with a house that has a buyer that or a seller i'm sorry that's not in any hurry and that that's what i do every day i go on and look at um you want to be at look at our new listings and see if somebody's got something where does she want to be at? They want to be anywhere from Northport, um, really Northport down to close to Fort Myers because the daughter is going to be going to school and next what, to the airport. What price? How much? Up to four hundred, but it has to have a pool okay. and room and room for three large dogs. I will have a house coming up 
you know, the tenant's going to move out and then the, uh, it's going to go up for sale. It's in Northport on uh, Fonseca. It's a uh, three, two, two, two and a half with a pool and it's got a fenced in backyard. So that may be perfect for her. And it's a, in that, it's going to be in that price range, um, you know. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Sorry to interrupt. Good morning. Hey, we're, we're, we're live on Facebook, by okay. the way. So um, I, I love that you guys are exchanging information about listings. This is, this is, this is great. Jackie's got a buyer. Donata's got a listing coming. Look at that. Yep. Make sure, make sure you two connect. Did I hear Jim Quinn on here? I heard him a minute ago. Hey, Donata, how, how, how big is that lot that that house is on? Uh, that It's a um, 80 by 125, I believe. And um, it's about 21, between 21 and 2200 square feet under air. It's got new air conditioning, new roof, um, water heater. I mean, all the basics. Jackie, did you say they have three big dogs? Correct. Or just three dogs? Um, no, they're, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're not little dogs. They're three bigger size dogs. Uh, Labradoodle man, type stuff. Are they uh, like, okay. are they like horses? <laughs> Mini horses? Like, yeah. I mean, who, who knows what she likes? She won't like it tomorrow. I'm just I saying. I can just imagine what our Facebook friends are thinking right now. Is this what they talk about on the Breakfast Club? Dogs? When it's a big dog, I you know Little dogs. I had one that well, had a hundred pound dogs. I'm like, that's not a dog, that's a horse. Well, the reason why I was asking was if you had like three big, I don't know, pit bulls or something in uh, a standard size yard, mm -hmm. I'd hate to be their neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think Jim's worried about the neighbors. Them. Hey, David, you have no idea what I'm going through with this you buyer. You care less so. about your buyers. He's worried about the neighbors. Well, <laughs> I mean, like I said, uh, what kind of dogs? Do you know what kind of dogs they are, Jackie? They're like Labradoodle All right. type. Hey, listen, but I'll call hey, you. Listen, listen, I appreciate this conversation, but you guys have to have this conversation now off <laughs> somewhere else. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. We get your hint. But, but I appreciate you all helping each other out here. Um, and if somebody's listening on Facebook and you have the, what fits Jackie's needs, uh, Jackie, just put that information in the chat room. Um, uh, but let everybody know on Facebook that's what your needs are, and, and we'll see if we can make a match for you. Um, <laughs> three big dogs. My dogs aren't big, and my neighbors hate them. So there. What people think is big is not big. Anyway. Hey, listen. Hey. This, this, um, you know, our Facebook, this is work to learn Wednesday. And I do want to get into that. Um, Amanda's not able to join us today because she's, she's traveling um, back from the East Coast. She, her and Brett did some uh, agent financials classes yesterday, which means they can come back and teach you. So hopefully they don't to keep all that information back to themselves. That being said, um, you got to take a minute to pay homage to somebody. Um, there she goes. She's looking for a three tool with pool, decent yard up to 400K. It'll be contingent on selling their. It'll be contingent on selling their home. Um, get used to that. We're going to see more of that. Uh, anyways, uh, does anybody know who Dave Jenks is? Mm -mm. Does anybody know what this book is? Yep. Or this book. Or I, this book. Uh, I don't have that one. Okay. What What do you see at the bottom of every book? Harry Keller with Dave Jenks. Oh, okay. Dave Papasan. So, yeah, Dave Jenks is a great man. And, um, I, I, you know, he's Gary Keller's close friend. He's co-authored several books with Gary Keller. He's been on stage with Gary Keller. Um, unfortunately, he lost his battle with COVID last night. Oh. And, yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and he's been battling COVID, um, but... He was he was a gentleman who who came, who was stricken with cancer a few years ago, and um, the 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 treatments that he was on cancer obviously affected his autoimmune system. So you know you know you have family members, you probably have friends that whose immune systems were compromised, uh, and they had to be very 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 careful, more careful than most of us. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Dave Jenks um, contracted the COVID, and. Uh, passed away last night but what was what was crazy is on facebook he posted the most beautiful goodbye message to 
all of his friends. Oh my God. And his wife. And uh, he, he, he didn't, he didn't make it through the night. So, but so when you're, when you're, when you're, when we're talking about, when we're looking at these books, Gary Keller with Dave Jenks and Jay Papazian, you know, um, Jay, Dave, many of Dave's wise wisdom words are in here. So um, oh, that's sad. Look them up, Google them. That is sad. Yeah. Great guy. He's, he's, he's spoken to this region. Um, once or twice, I think he spoke, he spoke up in the New England region where I was and, and definitely in the Arizona region where I was. I don't, I didn't know him personally, but um, I'm sure some of you maybe that are listening on Facebook have met him. But anyways, so today is Work to Learn Wednesday. I want to share something with you. Go ahead. I want to share some tools with you. I'm not just going to, no, no, no offense to Amanda. I'm not just going to pull an objection out of the whole bowl right now. I want to talk about some process. I want to talk about some strategies about handling objections. Is that okay for a second? Sure. Okay. One, one strategy that I like about objections is think about this for a second. Would you agree that sometimes the objection is the answer? What do I mean by that? Let me give you an objection and, 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 and convert that into an answer. Um, you know, and we're going to, we're going to hear this now. We're going to hear this now. You know, I, I'm probably going to list my house. Um, I don't think, you know, the, the holidays are coming. I'm probably just going to wait till after the holidays. Has anybody ever heard that before? Yep. Yeah. We hear it up North all the time. I understand that. And that's exactly why we need to meet to talk about why you shouldn't not, you're not going to say this. That's the script. The script is, I understand that. I can appreciate that. And that's exactly why we need to meet. How's tomorrow at three? So you can have that conversation with them as to why it's not possible, maybe not wise without getting into an argument to list their home after the holidays. Or how about this one? How, who's ever heard this objection? You know, um, we're probably just going to work. We have one of our friends just got their real estate license. We're just, we're going to work with them, you know, Oh, I can appreciate that. We all love seeing new people get in the business, but that's exactly why we need to meet. Does that make sense? Yep. So sometimes the objection is the answer. If, you, if, if all you said, if all you said to every objection is, I understand how you feel. And that's exactly why we, I don't want to pay this commission. I understand that. And that's exactly why we need to meet. Let's talk about this more. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a good one. Write this down. RAM, R-A-M. If you have a piece of paper in front of you. R stands for repeat. I think you know where I'm going with that. I just did it. I just gave an example of that. A in RAM means approve. Some, some would say acknowledge, approve or acknowledge. Or affirm. Okay. Or firm, yep. M stands for move, ram. So, so it, 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 don't get in an argument with people, ram them, okay? Repeat, uh, uh, approve, acknowledge, and move. Let's get, how, let me give an example. What, what be, might be an example of that? Okay, so here's the objection. Let, let, let me give you an objection and I'll, I'll do the ram and then maybe somebody else can help me out with that. Um, back to that same objection. I, 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 you know what? I decided that um, we're going to wait till the, after the holidays. Oh, so what, you, what you're saying is you think waiting after the holidays is the best thing at this point in time. Um, can I wait? My internet's unstable. Can everybody hear me still, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm in the office. Internet is so unstable. Somebody didn't feed the squirrels again. So I, yeah, what I heard is that you, you you think it's best to wait till after the holidays. And you know what? I can understand that. It can be stressful around the holidays. Um, other than that, what might stop you from listing your home? So I just repeated what they said. I approved and I moved on to the next question. So I guess, and I'm gonna, and, and matter of fact, I'm writing this on my wall right now, not on my wall, on a board. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ram. So when I'm having conversations in my world with real estate agents, I can, I can look at that and go and remind myself, and you might want to put it on a piece of paper or on your wall. I've seen agents build, put, you know, keywords and scripts and, and attach them to their, to their walls behind where they're making calls or on their whiteboard. But if you just repeat it, affirmed and ram, what does repeat do? Just, it just, it just as yeah, you're repeating the same question he is. Let's them know you're listening, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Let's them know that you're listening. How many times you've been in a conversation with somebody and they just they they just interrupt you and go on to the next question? I do it all the time with you people. They call me the interrupter. <laughs> that's my that's my superpower name. So what I've done to what I've learned to do what I'm what I'm struggling to do is when I walk into a room and interrupt something I said oh so what Brett just said is and let me interrupt but no that's not how I do it. but repeat let them know you're listening and by approving it's building trust wouldn't you think you're building trust by approving with them yep so you just you just did do that you listen to me. These are great strategies, by the way, guys. You listen to me, and now the guy's he, he's even agreeing with me. I'm going to let him move on to the next question. Does it make sense? Yeah. Kind of Put it on your wall. What's that? I kind of did that last night without even, you know, because like I, when I get into the conversations with these, uh, you know, uh, sellers or whatever, even a, if I go on a rental thing, you know, um, it's like, I had gone on one last night and this, these people weren't sure what they wanted to do. The house was either furnished or unfurnished. I must have repeated myself and their questions at least 10 times. Yeah. So let, let's do that. Cause I asked, I, I asked you guys to play a repeat, affirm or repeat, approve and move um, with me. Let's, let's have a Ram conversation. Um, let me just say somebody, let me, let me just throw an objection out there. You know, uh, guys, the market's so hot right now. Um, I, I, I think I'm just going to sell it myself. I hear what you're saying, Mr. Seller. However, how, what, what are your plans to sell it yourself? How are you going to go about doing that? So I want to hear his objections as to what he's going to do. So I can come back and just, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Do you think, and, and this is no, no judgment. Do you think that could turn into go down a real bunny trail? What about um, doing, oh, you want to sell the house yourself. Okay. Um, this is exactly why we should talk. I agree. Let's talk. Let's get together at three o'clock today. So, so Brandy, great job. Great job, Donata. You know, Randy just brought us all back to the objection is the answer. So what you're saying is, I understand, you know, I, I hear you. you think it's a great market. I'm selling your house may not be a bad idea. I might trap myself, but that's exactly why we need to meet. Can we get together tomorrow? No, I don't want to meet tomorrow. I'm going to try it on my own. I understand that. You're trying on your own. I've done that a few times myself. I understand. And, 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 and move on. Um, and we're not able, not always going to be able to get the appointment. It, it's easier. Would you agree? It's easier to get the appointment if you've if you've asked great questions, right? Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, and once you get in that door, that's where the other conversations come into play. Right. So, and 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 Donata, and back to you. You you were going down a path of finding out the situation and the motivation. So, here's two really good words. If you add them together, it's a formula. And the, and, and the result is a great conversation. Situation plus motivation is what gets you to a great conversation or equals a great conversation. Situation plus motivation. Because people act on emotion, not on logic, right? Right? right. What, is their, what is their motivation? So as you're thinking about repeat, affirming, and moving on, Find it, get, get, get find, like Donata just did a moment ago, was going to try and find out their situation. So, uh, okay, uh, you're going to sell your home yourself. You don't want me to come visit you. Could you, would you, what, do you mind sharing with me what your plan is? And they go, well, I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to do it. My neighbor told me I'm just going to put a sign on it and put a price on it and just open my doors for a weekend and it'll be sold. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
well. <laughs> you know, my big thing on, on those when people start talking that stuff and it seems like it really kind of hits them is I say to um, the, pre, you know, I talk about the pre-approval yeah. and having strangers in my home that number one, you don't know if you're pre-approved or who they are. And, yeah. uh, you know, that so always is, seems to be a, you know, a big one that they haven't thought about. So, so write these words down too on your wall when you're making calls, how, who, and why. And, 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 and that's a trigger to Carol to, on that note, great job, Carol, to ask that question. So, so how do you really, so oh, you really, you're going to say, how do you feel about letting strangers walk through your home? Mm -hmm. And why would you consider doing that when you can have a professional monitor all that for you? But I understand. And why have people in your home that couldn't afford it in the first place because they're not pre-approved. Yes. Another great question on the who, why, who, and what. So let me ask you, Mr. Seller, I understand that you think the, who's going to pre-qualify these people for you? Question, question, question. Who's going to pre-qualify these people for you? And how are you going to do that? Well, well, I uh, well, I figured I'd ask him. <laughs> well, do you know what? what uh, okay, I I hear you're going to ask him. Do you know it? And I and, and that's a smart idea. Do you know what to ask him? The seller that I have now that's under contract to house in Northport. He has other houses. He had another house in Port Charlotte that he had decided to sell it himself. And, you know, I said to him, I'll say, I understand you want to sell it yourself, but let me help you with at least getting to the process. Um, he didn't want to do any of that. So I went ahead and let him do that only because I knew he had other homes. And, and that's exactly what happened when they first sold that house, he did it himself. He had literally over a hundred people. He said, he called, he said, I was so stressed out. I couldn't handle it anymore. So that's how I got these other homes from him. So, and that's, and that's a great idea. I mean, did anybody see the, the file that I posted in the group yesterday called, it's called the, I think it's, I think it's 167 or 168 things a listing agent does. Yeah, I got it. In the file it. section. What, what if all you did, what if all you did was handed somebody that wants to sell their home their own that? Now that's a, that's a very abbreviated version of a booklet that I used to give out to for sale by owners. And the book that I gave out to for sale by owners just would scare the, scare the bejeebers out of them and go, it's like, it's like, it's like opening up a piece of Ikea furniture and you see the instruction manuals this big, you go, yeah, I'm going to let, I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy it assembled. <laughs> I'm going to let somebody else put it together for me. And that can happen with a sale by owner. You show them all the tasks that they're going to have to do. A, a smart, really smart guy go, I can do all these things. I think the majority of the people are going to go, oh my God, I had no idea that I yeah. had to do all these things. And you may not always win. So it's just like, I don't win when I'm talking to real estate agents about coming to this company, uh, but you may have the opportunity. What, what, if, what did you just do? You built rapport mm -hmm. and you may be the, have an opportunity to be plan B for them. Listen, I wish you all the luck. I know you're very, I, you're probably very capable of selling your home in this market, but I just want to be sure that if that doesn't work out for you, I'm your plan B. You like that I like one? It. You yeah. like it? Yeah, like I said, I, like I, mean, I was his plan B because he couldn't handle the first one. He said, there you go. He said, I can't handle it. It was like so much. He said, and then I had to send everything to the attorney. I wind up, the closing cost that he wind up paying would actually more so because it was an attorney yeah that's the beautiful one and he's, he's kind of uh uh matching up what he sold in, in the other house with the closing cost that is with this house and he's like holy shit he said i could have gotten more money in my pocket back yeah. then yeah so who 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 you know we're, we're, this is work to learn wednesday and hopefully you're learning something from this ram conversation and putting who how and why on your boards and you know sometimes objections are the answer that's <laughs> you know my two favorite answers to any objection of you've heard me always say are, are other than that and 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 i understand that's exactly that's exactly why we need to meet you know 
So let me ask somebody a question. Uh, who has uh, a great, most of you on this call, I think are, are, are working with a lot of buyers or working with buyers. I know Susan just landed a listing and I want to get to that in a second. Who has a great buyer consultation questionnaire? Who believes they have the best buyer consultation questionnaire? What happened? What time are you leaving? Uh, oh, that's Donata. Um, who would like a great buyer consultation questionnaire? Sorry. Susan? Tatia? I printed up, give me the scoop one. And mm -hmm. I revised, give me the scoop. Yeah. And I made my ice cream red and put on a different home because I had to get some kind of uh, buyer's packet assembled. Yeah. So that's what I'm working on. So I can use tips on that because I have no idea what to put in there, but I like the questionnaire that's give me the scoop. Yeah. Got it. I don't know. If, I've never heard that one before. That's a good I one. Showed it to me yesterday. It was pretty cool. Give me the scoop. Yeah. Okay. And, cone and then she has questions underneath. It. <laughs> you know, it's really cool. I revised it last night. All right. Well, now that I got your attention, Susan, um, during your listing, that your first listing that you got, did you experience any objections that you can share with us? Yes, she had. Uh, luckily, Donata was with me, but she had an offer from her neighbor across the street. And she's like, she told me she can put 200000 in my hand. I can just sell it to her. So we told her, yes, you can't sell it to her, but I can put more money in your hand and I can do all the work for you. You need me to do it for you. Okay, that's that's good. Is that exactly how the words came out of your mouth, if you recall? For the most part, you yeah. agree, Donata? It yeah. really came out of Donata's yeah. mouth. I said to her, I said, you know, I, I understand that this woman is wanting to give you $200,000 in your hands. However... Mm -hmm you're still going to need Susan to be your, your agent because she, she has all the knowledge that she needs to do to make this happen for you. And the fact of the matter is, and then I asked her about the mortgage. Does she have a mortgage on her house? And she said she had like 40 something thousand. I said, okay, so $200,000 less than 40, that's 160,000 for you. Plus any minus any other cost. So that's not going to give you $200,000 in your pocket. I said, so by listing it with Susan with a higher amount of what the home, what your home is really would sell for, I said, you could probably get more money for it and it'll sell maybe above ask because that's where we're going at with these days. So, you know, after lo and behold, about maybe 15 minutes of it, but she did sign the documents. Okay. So you made sure that they understood that they needed Mm -hmm. your services mm -hmm. and whether that person could have put 200 grand in their pocket or not um yeah. you know that you could probably add more value than that mm -hmm. which is fantastic but i'm sure there was some rapport yeah. building and trust building before that correct susan yes there was yeah. so i mean you may not coming in cold that 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 as your first conversation may not have been a good one right there had been prior mm -hmm. conversations right? right this woman trusted you right? She knows you cared about her, right? And, 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 and let's not forget that part, right? Back yeah. to building rapport um, and asking great questions. And just some, 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 some Joe Blow from Idaho realtors wouldn't have been able to have that conversation yeah. on the first conversation. Well, you had to build. Susan did before all of this that I went with her, um, <laughs> build that rapport with her she did build that trust with her um and she had conversations prior to that which you know this woman is an old lady in a wheelchair so she actually cleaned her toilet for her you know like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, so that kind of little things like that kind of brought that you know trust enough trust to say hey i like you you know and then when we went we brought her a pizza it's like little, little things, I think that, you know, you know would make it, uh, but she did it all on her own, really. I just, you know, went along for support. Yeah, good, good. Is it on deposit yet? Are you there? It's going to be listed. Uh, it's going to have a delayed listing. Okay. 
got to get cleaned up a little bit and you know but yeah okay all right listen guys um i want to ask you guys a question um who who wants to do a who wants to do a repeat a, a ram with me who wants to not have an argument with me who wants to ram with me oh boy oh i think i've done a lot i'll of be the customer okay brandy you be the customer brandy. all right I'll be the agent. I'll be the agent. I'll do. I'll do the. I'll do a ram with a real life person. Uh, let's. The, what can be our object, ob, objection? Can somebody give me an objection that I can. That can role play. Uh, the seller, Brandy. You're going to tell me. How does this work? Uh, Why don't you let it be a surprise, and that way, yeah, you, you have to come up with it on your own. All right, Brandy. Well, Brandy, you have an objection you want to give me. Do hey, what? You want an objection? You give, give me an objection because you're the customer. I okay. Wait, wait, wait. Ring, ring. You gonna call me? Or are you coming? I'm gonna. To call, I'll call you. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, is this Brandy? It is. Yeah. Hey, Brandy. I, I, let me introduce myself. My name is David Heyer from Keller Williams Realty uh, here in Punta Gorda and Port Charlotte. Uh, I recently noticed that your home is no longer listed on the expired. It's no longer listed on the MLS, but it has an expired tag next to it. Are you, were, were you aware that your home expired last night? Um, yeah, our uh, our contract ran out. Oh, so your contract ran out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's too bad. Um, do you have any uh, desire to relist your home with another realtor? You know, it, it really didn't go so well. I'm, th I'm thinking I'm just going to stay where I am for a while until. Um, yeah, it didn't I'm go well, huh? Again. Yeah, I, I'm sorry that it didn't go well. I feel badly about that. That's just unfortunate in this market. Home, All homes have a really great chance of selling. So if it's okay, could I indulge you in a second and ask you if you were moving, where, where would you be moving to? Um, maybe Naples. Maybe Naples. But Naples is a great city. What? What? What's? Uh, did you notice I repeated? Maybe Naples. Uh, Naples is a great city. Affirmed. Uh, next question is: Is what? So what? What would send? What would get you to Naples? Why? Do you mind if I ask why you moving to Naples? I'm just curious. Um, I have some family there. You have some family. Fantastic. Wouldn't it be nice to be around that family during the holidays, and not have to travel down there? You would. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's exactly why I'd like to meet with you um, to talk about the opportunity to get you down to Naples a little sooner than you than you had hoped. Uh, would that be OK if I call? We met tomorrow, either this afternoon is open or tomorrow morning at nine. Well, you know, um, the last time I had a realtor, it, like I said, it didn't go so well. So yeah. I'm. You know, there wasn't a lot of communication. I didn't really have a lot of showings in my house. I, I think I'm just going to do it myself. And then I can take that extra money and um, put it to better use. Ah, uh, you so said you're, you're putting some thought to thinking about doing it yourself. Okay, I can understand that. I can see why if you weren't happy with that experience. Uh, have you ever sold a home yourself before? I haven't. Well, I, it again, that's that a, hard. Yeah, it, it, it can be very hard or very easy. So um that's and that's again exactly why i'd like to meet with you would it be okay if i stopped by tomorrow uh at nine or ten in the morning i actually have a list of 168 things that a listing agent does and maybe that'll help you through this process um would that be okay if i stop by and drop that off to you oh, be great I'd, I'd love to have that information but you know i'm not i'm not finding anything with you oh that's okay that's all right i'm just here to i'm just here to help i understand that you you, you probably will list yourself and um Here's the real, here's what I really like to accomplish today, uh, Brandy, by dropping that off is, is have the ability to be your plan B, should you not have success selling yourself. So 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, okay. I just need 10 or 15 minutes of your time to I'll go over what a listing agent does so, so you can be educated. Sure. Okay, That'd thank be you. Great. I'll see you tomorrow. So how, how do you think that went? Do you think that could be a real conversation? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. It is a real conversation. Okay. Did you, did you see the repeat? Brandy, did you feel better that I was repeating what you said? No, and you know, I was listening and agreeing with you. You know, almost. What was that affirmed. last part? And almost in agreeing with you, almost approve, you know, giving you approval on, instead of arguing with you. Like some agents will go, well, why would you want to list it yourself? We know who those agents are. Why would you, why, why would you want to do that? 
Do you know how much it takes? And start asking questions like, do you know how much it takes? What's involved to sell your home? Rather than coming from contribution, say, I'll tell you what, I, I have a nice little list of 168 things that a listing agent does that I've compiled that I like to drop off and get an excuse to go visit them. And you, then you notice at the end, when I, when, I affirm, when I confirm the appointment, I ask for 10 or 15 minutes just to review those items. <laughs> I'm going to open up the IKEA instruction manual and scare the bejesus out of her. <laughs> but if she still does it herself, I'm her plan B. I just make, gave myself an opportunity to be a plan B. I liked it. I mean, you were agreeing with me and making me feel like I could do it myself. And then when I take a look at that 168 things to do, I'm going to be overwhelmed. Yeah. David, can you hear me? I, Jim, we can, I, all I hear is David, can you hear me? Okay. Well, that's all I said. <laughs> <laughs> that's all he said. Why, why do I feel like if I go like this, I can hear Jim better? I don't know. I no, you're you're really really soft. You, it sounds like you're 10, 10 miles away from your. Can anybody else hear Jim? Very Barely. Soft. Okay. Very soft. I just I just had a suggestion. Please do give it to us. I'll, I'll try to relay it if I can. Well, earlier in, in the conversation, where he, she said uh, she didn't have a good experience with her her agent, I think Amanda might have jumped in there and said, "Yeah, I hear that a lot." And that's why I specialize in expired listings. Would it be okay if I came by and showed you how I get those listings sold or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's good stuff. That's a longer version of that's exactly why we need to meet. Yeah. I hear you. You could also do that. Um, like do like what David did. And then when he comes by to give him that paperwork, he could say something like that then that way he's got the appointment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, how about this one? Here's a thought process. Take that 168 things. That, I'll tell you what, why don't we get together and talk about what your realtor wasn't doing on these things to make sure that I or you do all these things, you know? So yeah, I mean, that's good stuff right there. It's good stuff. Get the appointment without, but you cannot close. Matter of fact, any great script person will tell you, you cannot close. You do not have permission to close, and I don't care if anybody disagrees with me. You don't have permission to close unless you've had a great conversation. And what is the formula for a great conversation? I ask you to write it down. Situation plus motivation plus equals a great conversation. And I think I, I think I, I, you know, we're role playing, but you know, the conversation with Brandy about moving to Naples might that I found out the, the situation and the motivation I could have gone really 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 deep on those conversations so you say your family's out of Naples what tell me a little bit about them you know for all I know she wants to move to Naples for all I know she wants to move to Naples because she's got a sick aunt or maybe that's closer to her children and then we can get more into the to the motivation right right more situation, more motivation equals a greater conversation. And, and, and you all but have permission, permission to close. It's good stuff. I wrote down on my wall, Ram. I'm going to make up my new flyer. See, I got all of this written down. <laughs> yep. How I got an email this morning that is an interesting um, I think a lot Objection. of people are going to start hearing it. And it's yeah. from my customers that basically gave up for a while. And okay. I got an email from them this morning. I still send them listings. And uh, I got an email from them this morning that said, is the market slowing down? Is the market slowing down? Okay, let's work on that one together. How, how, how would you guys answer that? Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's role play that. That's a great one. I want to hear what Jackie said to her. Well, I, I sent an email back that said, yeah, that there are some houses that are that are staying on the market for days instead of hours. And I said, and honestly, from what I am seeing, the 175 to 300 seems to be flying off the shelf at the, at the same rate yeah. as it was before. And these guys are, they're the three to 400, but they want waterfront and they're just going to have a hard time getting it. And I said that, you know, and, and I actually started the email with, um, well, as you can see, the listing I sent you is already pending. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we're still pretty hot. 
do you know what, um, and this may be too short of an answer, but if by email, this would have been a hard one. But if somebody ever asked you that in person, this is one of the favorite, favorite responses of some of the top, top scripters out there, conversationalists out there is, well, that's an interesting question. Why do you ask? And then wait, why do you ask? Their answer could be, well, because I'm waiting to find a great deal. Brandy, I have another answer for that question. You were about to say something. I was going to say for the uh, prices to come down. And that's yeah. what a lot of mine want. They want a great deal. Okay. You know, they so, want everything for less than 200. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I was thinking with Jack, you know, in my head, things, I'm, I'm kind of a sarcastic son of a gun. And I like to relate to uh, daily, daily things that we, t we do in our lives, like driving down the highway. Is the market slowing down? Yeah. It's like, it's like being on the 75 over here and, and, and somebody just, ramped it down from 85 to 80. It's still moving very fast, just not at 85 miles an hour, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so what you're saying is it's not slowing down. I'm just saying that it's, that, 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 that depending upon what lane you're in, Jackie, what, what price range you're buying in. Yeah. Some, some could argue that, that, that homes over a million dollars have longer market times. So this is a great question for Jack. This is, this is one of those opportunities to be very, very educated about the market of the moment. Who goes on, who, who is spending their time or a little bit of time each day going through the MLS and looking at the statistics of pendings and days on market and how the changes are being, are happening. Anybody, anybody? At least five okay. times a day. Okay. Yeah, I pay attention to it. Okay. And that, it allows you to be, that, that allows you to, uh, uh, give great answers, right? You know, so why do you ask? Well, Brent, as many said, well, I'm waiting for prices to come down. I understand that. Remind me again what price range we're in. Oh, we're over, we're in the three to $400,000 range. Well, I can tell you right now that our statistics tell us that the days on market in the three to 400 range are still, uh, it, it, just, it just jumped from five days on market to seven days on the market. So if you think that's a slowdown, if you qualify, if that qualifies as a slowdown, it's like that going from 85 to 80, right? Um, well, these customers basically just gave up. I mean, they just got frustrated. Yeah. Well, and that's going to happen. That's going to happen. But let them know you, there was a woman on the, on, 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 on the on insiders group this morning, the pivot shift group, I'm sorry. And by the way, I'm going to talk about the pivot shift in a second here. But anyways, uh, she said, she said to the customer, she says, I'll tell you what, you're right. It is a bear of a market to be in right now as a home buyer. But here's what I, here's what I want from you. I want your help. I, both of us really have to grind to find a property for you. I want you, I'm asking you, I'm going to earn my pay on my end, but I'm asking you to search just as hard as I am. And I promise you, we will find this together. And then you get into bed with them, you know, and, and, and it was, the example was the, the person was looking for a $150,000 house in, in, in the Charlotte, Carolina, North Carolina area, which doesn't exist. It's like look, walking out your door looking for a diamond, she said. And together, together, they found it. They were in this together. And the buyer knew he was looking just as hard as his real estate agent was. And they, and, and they weren't going to separate from each other. And I think, I think we've had some situations recently, in our, even in our own market center, that I love it when our agents call and know that I'm on a call every morning. But anyways, well, maybe they don't know. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> um, It'd be great if we had a calendar or something so people could know. Yeah. Do we have a calendar? Yeah. Do we send out daily emails to anybody? HLBPRP training. Dot com. <laughs> never heard of it. <laughs> never, never heard of it. But where was I going with that? Um, <laughs> can somebody squirrel? Sorry. <laughs> Your phone, you're the interrupter. I, I know, I know. It's my fault to interrupt. I owe five bucks to kid of you. When it, come, when it comes to the bidding wars, because um, I have had buyers say that they don't want to get involved in a bidding war. And what I have been saying and it's been working for me is um, you don't have to get involved in a bidding war. 
All you have to do is give me the best offer you can give, and I'm going to do my best to turn it into the best offer that they get. Yeah. It's only a war if you're going back and forth. Right. Right. Let's just let's just come out with all the fire part, the big guns. Let's not start with the 22 pistols. <laughs> if they still make those. Let's come out with the cannon. What's our cannon offer? What's our what's our what's our H bomb offer? So we're not at war. We end it. Yeah. And they don't understand that as a um, as an agent, when you're writing contract, I mean, buyers just think that, OK, all this agent is going to do is take my number that I'm throwing on there and send it to the listing agent. And you have to make sure that they understand. No, there's ways that we can that we can tweak this offer with deposits and with the type of contract that we use and with the things that we're asking for to make it a more powerful offer on paper. Right. Right. And they don't understand. I mean, they just assume that you're just writing a number down and sending it over and they don't understand that there's a lot involved in, in the ways that you can do these contracts. Thank you, Jim and Brett, that yes. you can make your offer. You could offer the exact same dollar figure as the guy next to you, but the way you've done your contract, you win. Yeah. How can we put it? Jim, go ahead. The other thing that might influence that is who the agent on the other side is if and, and how your how your behavior is. If you go into it with a war mentality as opposed to a collaborative mentality, you might not win that war because of that attitude, right? Oh my God, Jim, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. If you go, if you have conversations with the other agent, just like you're having with your people, even a RAM conversation, like you're talking to another agent, let's play that for a second. Hey, I, I call Brandy or Susan or Jackie and I say, hey, listen, I saw you, my buyers are going to be, my buyers are going to be submitting an offer with a, a it's a good, could be $10,000 above asking price and a 30 day close. And we want a response by tomorrow at five. I would say, and your point is <laughs> versus versus versus. Hey, Donata. Hey, this is David over at Keller Williams. Listen, I have a I have a buyer. I think we're gonna be we're gonna be submitting a great offer. Um, it's probably gonna be several thousand dollars above asking price. Uh, but what's most important, right? Build rapport with the agent. So we're coming at a great price in terms. But any hot buttons that your seller is looking for? As far as the price, you mean? Well, any any terms and conditions, because we don't want any contract. They might want to stay there longer and do right. a lease back, or they might want to close earlier or close right. later, or right. They don't want an inspection, a long right. inspection time. A lot of them. Are so, back. so what are hot buttons for your seller, right? And then and then you can go back to your buyer and and and, and have that conversation. Jim talks about this all the time. Make sure you call first if you can and say, listen, I want I want you to be able to submit the best offer possible for your seller. What do you think? What do you think we need to do? And you're going to get the jerk ones that go just just write it up and send it over. Well, let me ask you then: is 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 time of closing important to them, right? Because your buyer may be telling you, "Hey, tell them we can close in 30 days." They may not want to close in 30 days. These should be obvious questions. And in Susan, who just took her first listing, if you're listening, I expect that you will be that type of person that will take those calls from agents and let them ask you those questions, right? Susan, tell me what's tell me what the hot pot spots are for your for your seller. <laughs> Meeting. <laughs> so I have was, literally asked the listing agent, "Is there a dollar figure that will get this done?" And one of them has actually answered me. Really? So, yeah. Here's here's our highest offer right now. When um, I purchased my home in April, uh, um, the my my realtor said you've you have it listed for 289 what is it that your seller really wants and he said really? 15 15 to 20 over asking so we made we made the offer and yeah. it was That's great great, great question especially the most experienced agents if they're going to present multiple offers to the seller if they've had a bad experience with an agent versus an agent that's willing to cooperate with them they're going to point that out to the sellers when they're presenting those offers yes jim is exactly right knowing your competition knowing having a great report listen i know hey listen i know that we can or susan will be able to ask these 
by having conversations. Jim Quinn, I, I can tell you of the five offers that we have on this house, that this guy, I, we can work with this person and it will be a smooth process. And that might be more important to us right now than working with this offer that might be a couple of thousand dollars over, over the other offers. Difficult working with, before we're even under contract, can you imagine dealing with an inspection issues? With oh my guy? God, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's, that, that's gold. Woo. Woo. It's the same thing as a, as a buyer, as the buyer's agent too, because there are definitely certain listings that I would much rather work with than other ones. Right, right. And it's not always based on commission, but sometimes no. it's, sometimes no, it it's like the Patterson group. I mean, you can never okay. go wrong working with the Patterson group. They're just top notch. Communication is everything. And I mean, they're fabulous to work with. Yeah, you, you know that the information is going to be accurate and, um, you know, that you're going to get a response. And, um, and, I, and I think, I think Matt is, is growing a lot in that area, too. If you get the chance to talk with him or his listing manager, is, is they're, going to, they're, they're going to throw hints on how to get it to be, a be, he be the best offer, right? Mm -hmm. The thing about the way he presents, if he has two competing offers and one's from our office and one's not, He's going to point out the fact that, you know, if, if we run into any hiccups on this deal with somebody in my office, we probably have a better likelihood that we're going to be able to work it out than if I'm working with somebody. Yeah. Okay, listen, I'm going to try and end this call a little early. I want to go back to Dave Jenks for a second. And I'm going to look this up and find, find the exact – uh, verbiage behind it. But one of his, one of the quotes that Dave Jenks has said in front of many people before is fear is your compass. And does anybody have any, any thoughts on what that means? Fear is your compass. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, let me just read you something that I, a screenshot that I took of something this morning. Um, maybe this will help you. I like to help people think differently. It says, it says right here, let fear be your compass. Don't let it be your barrier. Let it be your compass. The only reason you are fearful is because you are afraid of the outcome. Get over it. The only way you get good at something is doing it bad and getting it right. The only way you get good at something is doing it bad and getting it right. Okay. Sometimes we get on these calls and we have bad conversations and we practice it. We didn't do a, a ton of practice. We did some role plays. Thank you, Donata. And thank you, uh, Jackie. And, and, and thank you, uh, Brandy, and, and everybody that, 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 that responded. Um, but they're clunky at times. But if you keep in mind the end, you know, R-A-M. Motivation plus situation equals a great conversation. Then I can ask for an appointment. If you start practicing those in your own mind, the conversations get better. Ask great questions. Who's the, who's the best objection what what person in your what person do you know is the best objection handler in the world you know the answer you probably don't guess it amanda billy keller amanda yeah amanda and kids oh yeah okay children oh who yeah. do you know anybody that asked my son what? explained that it was my fault that his room was dirty <laughs> i it's your fault right, because right? I bought him the things that he has in his room. Oh, it's your fault that his room is dirty. Sarah DeRosa posted a great yeah. video the other day of his, her kid. Didn't do, what did she put like black rice on his floor to make it think, make it think it was a, a mouse turds or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but children ask great questions. A lot of whys, a lot of hows. How does that work, mommy? How did that happen? Why did that happen? Who did that? You know? And if it, and, and it, it's smart to keep those words right up in front of you, just so you can, if you're, if you're dying for, if you're all of a sudden there's a quite an objection, you know, you can remind yourself to repeat or maybe go, okay, I understand that, but who's going to help you do that? Why are you moving? What's important to you about moving to Naples? Who's going to help you sell your home when that, who's going to, who's going to write the offer when a buyer does come? To your home for sale by owner who's actually going to write that offer for you they may not have thought about that 
it's easy to put a price. It's easy to get a buyer, but what happens next? I want to be that who I want to be that person. Anyways, anybody got an objection they want to talk about before we go? I think we handled a lot of objections today. Good. I know we talked, we talked about, we did some role play, but we talked about theory and tools. I like the Ram conversation mm -hmm. and I like the, like the formula of situation plus motivation equals a great conversation, which means you can close. Um, I like that plan B. Hey, that's a good one. The How many people can you use that for? The what? The plan B. I understand you're going to do this on your own. I understand you don't need another realtor. I just want to be sure that if you do change your mind, I'm your plan B because you're plan A right now. That's a good one. Hey, David, Carol and Charlie have a great story about a customer uh, neighbor of theirs that they've been following up with. I don't know if they're still on here, but. No, they left. Thank Were they the plan B for them? Well, well, she was tr trying to build up rapport with this neighbor because he was going to be selling his house. And so she was following up with him regularly. And then turned out he had a water leak or something. So she called him back a couple of days later and she could tell the guy just didn't seem right. Well, it turned out he had a friend that was a agent up in Venice, uh, which he hadn't mentioned previously. So she didn't push. She just said, oh, well, I understand, you know, I was really just calling about to make sure, see how you made out without water leak and didn't push them. Uh, but, it, and she, but she did mention, you know, the fact that they live right around the corner and they know the market um, and are more available than somebody would be from Venice. Kind of left it, left it at that. And they, they ended the conversation. The next thing you know, the guy calls her back and wants them to come over. Yeah. So. She was kind enough to just check in, make a care call. And without saying she wanted to be their plan B, she became their plan B, right? Yeah, without, you know, making it a confrontation. Yeah. Right. Well, the, and, 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 and why does this go with, uh, this should go without saying, but there, you guys got to understand, there's a lot of agents out there that just are argumentative. Mm -hmm. You're an absolute nut job to list with somebody up in Venice. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Why would you do that? Why? Yeah, right. I mean, so, hey, listen, great call, guys. Thank you for your sticking on with me. Um, I know uh, Amanda is the queen of objections, but uh, hopefully I brought some value to you today you did, and uh, we'll, we'll get a chance to talk later. OK, got it. All right. Bye -bye. I'll, see you, I'll see you up in Fort Charlie, right? Uh, yep. Oh, yeah, we'll there. there. Okay. The bye -bye. Class, right? hey, hey, contract class did not right. change, right? It's th it's one thirty to three thirty. Yes. Okay. okay. That's correct. See All you right. then. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.